Good evening, and welcome to Behind the Shadows. My name is Susan Finelli, and I'm your host and author of Behind the Shadows. Our program focuses on what one sees behind the shadows of the naked eye. Our programs will focus on people, places, and things. We will have some fun shows. We will have some serious shows. Uh, tonight, I'm happy to say we're going to have a very good time. Uh, and we're working on a program called Timeless Girls with Hats. And I am happy to say that a good friend of mine, David Vernon, is here tonight as my co-host. David himself is a uh, accomplished torch singer. He is a designer. He's a set designer. And I can go on and on and spend the evening talking about uh, David. And I'm very happy. And thank you so much for agreeing to uh, be here tonight. My pleasure. Um, our two guests tonight, uh, when you see them, uh, they, during the day at business, they are two ladies who work in the uh, public and uh, government sector of business. Um, one of whom I've known for many years and just uh, found out about what goes on behind her shadows, and tonight I'm going to expose that. Um, so once these two professional ladies leave the workplace, they become idiosyncratic fashionistas. And what I'd like to do is welcome Valerie and Jean to the program tonight. Welcome both of you. Thank you. Um, and uh, I have to admire your hats, both of you. Uh, Valerie, uh, that is a wonderful hat that you have on this evening Thank you. Uh, that we're going to talk about. Uh, but just to give you a little background, um, Valerie is fluent in Japanese. She lived in Japan for, I believe, two years. Ten years. Ten years. She taught English um, in Japan. Uh, she's very accomplished. I worked with Valerie many, many years ago, and Valerie always had a hat. Winter, summer, spring, or fall, Valerie wore a hat. <laughs> and uh, one day, uh, my mother's friend sent me this leopard hat, antique leopard hat, which Number one, it was too small for me. And number two, I really can't carry the hat. So I said to Valerie one day, you know what? When I find that hat, I'm going to give it to you. She said, OK, fine. Five years later, I found the hat. <laughs> Valerie and I had gone our separate ways. But I packed up the hat and sent it to her, and we reconnected. And it's fabulous. <laughs> it's a fabulous hat. Um, now, uh, Jean, Jean comes from uh, a background, I think, is your father a rocket scientist? Or had been, before had he been? died. Yep. Yeah, he, he worked for NASA. He'd been a Navy jet pilot, um, mm -hmm. designed rockets, Nike uh, rockets that would, um, he worked on the Apollo program with NASA. Very interesting. And, you, and your mother? She worked for GAO. GAO. Mm -hmm. So as so you... I was just, you know, ge genetically determined to be a government employee. <laughs> I grew up in D.C., which so it was like the, the neighborhood business. <laughs> That's it. So, so as you can see, uh, the backgrounds of, of Valerie and Jean, you would never think that behind the shadows of their, their upbringing and what they do for a living, uh, they are... Um, they are designers, they are lovers of hats, and Valerie, we must talk about the hat that you are wearing. <laughs> <laughs> now, it looks to me as if it's uh, an image of the Guggenheim. It is the Guggenheim Museum. And if you can tell us how you came about designing this hat, and if for a moment, if you could just bend down into the camera, because I would love the audience just to see the detail of this little up a little more, but the detail of this hat, I mean, it has the skylight. I mean, it's just absolutely wonderful. So if you can um, tell us a little bit about the hat and, and your adventure with you and Jean at the Guggenheim. <laughs> uh, they, they were gutsy enough to go to the Guggenheim wearing this hat. Uh, so if you can talk to us a little bit about it. And well, um, it started because I like going to the Easter Parade. Um, and I used to wear traditional hats to the Easter Parade. And I discovered that almost nobody was wearing traditional hats, and nobody was looking at them. Um, and everybody was wearing bunnies and ridiculous things. <laughs> and I thought, well, OK, if that's what gets attention at the Easter Parade, then I'll wear something outrageous as well. And I had always thought that the Guggenheim Museum had a hat-like structure to it. Um, and I thought, couldn't that be turned into a hat by somebody? And luckily, I found the somebody who could turn it into a hat. And I just wrote him an email saying, 
could you do that? And he looked at a few pictures online and said, yeah, I think I could. And he turned it into this fabulous production. Um, I had no input whatsoever. He just took it upon himself to do exactly this and the Swarovski, Swarovski crystals in the um, uh, Skylighter. His idea, God bless him, it's a fabulous idea. Um, and I took it to the Easter parade and utterly to my surprise, all the Europeans loved it and the Americans didn't understand it. So that was two years ago <laughs> and it hadn't been out of its box since then. And um, finally, Jean and I both had the right outfits at the right time. Well, I know you tell me that a hat is an accessory and you just can't throw on a hat with any old outfit. You can't. Yeah. Um, and as, you, as we discussed earlier, I would have liked to wear a white suit with this because that really would have gone better with the white hat, but that's fine. Um, that's what we did. We went to the Guggenheim and as soon as we walked in... We were at the Kandinsky show too. Yes. So it, the place was packed. We got out of the cab. It was hard <laughs> to find a taxi cab that would accommodate the hat. <laughs> but luckily we got one of the, the bigger, boxier ones so that Valerie didn't have to lay down on the back. <laughs> we made our exit in front of the museum and people just came out right up to her immediately. And people from Amsterdam, yes. from London, you know, swarmed around her, took her picture outside. We walked into the museum and they were just kind of like, oh, no, 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 you don't need to stand in line. <laughs> and we got guests of staff free passes and... and the run of the museum, literally. That's wonderful, that's wonderful. And what was really funny was that um, they have a very strict policy that you're not allowed to take photographs, which we understand, mm -hmm. but the guards themselves were taking pictures of us. <laughs> oh, and head of security <laughs> had, his, had his photograph with us, and I said, well, then we're safe now, because if he's getting his picture with us, we're, we're covered. You're yeah. covered, yeah. that's great. As long as it wasn't your mug shot <laughs> right. that exactly. they were taking. <laughs> Valerie, what is the hat made of? It's straw. Is it straw? Except for mm -hmm. the, the Swarovski crystals, it's straw. And uh, the guy who makes it is Ignatius mm -hmm. Cregan is right. his last name. Right. Um, and he's he's also very um, idiosyncratic himself. He does what he wants to do, and he doesn't do what he doesn't want to do. Mm -hmm. And um, this idea entertained him. Yes. Yeah. And that's why he agreed to do it. Mm -hmm. I think if I'd said, I'll give you $5,000, <laughs> if you weren't interested in the idea, he wouldn't have done it he for me. Well, can I take a closer look at that? Oh, yeah, sure. And we went, to, we took a road trip on Thursday, and we went to, last Thursday we went to the uh, Philadelphia Craft Show, mm -hmm. and the very first booth when we walked in the door was Ignatius oh. and his hats. Oh, and his yeah. Hats. And we had made our, you know, we usually do these packs. We're going to have to spend so much time. We're going to work <laughs> our way around. And we spent an hour, over an hour right <laughs> at his place. Um, I will not divulge on TV how many hats I did purchase in case my husband ever actually watches <laughs> this. Um, but this is one of the Ignatius hats. And it's a, another, it's a, it's a much smaller version. Mm -hmm. It is also the same kind of straw. They have a, and this is a denuded mm -hmm. um, peacock feather of right. all things but very lightweight. He makes amazing, amazing hats. Um, well, I, I was telling you uh, before the show that when uh, I was a child and when I made my first communion, my mother had that hat that you just took off, but it had a big geranium on, <laughs> on the end uh -huh. of it. And I said to her, don't you dare wear that hat to my communion. <laughs> and then I'm looking out on the pews and I see this big geranium you know, sticking up and I said, oh my God, she wore the hat. That must have been a wonderful <laughs> hat. It was, it was. But I see now you ladies have changed gears in your hats. Uh, they were wonderful. Jean, tell me a little bit about the hat you're wearing. These are vintage. Um, mm -hmm. The previous hats were, are modern day new hats. Mm -hmm. um, and these are vintage. Mine is probably from the 40s, mm -hmm. um, we think. And it's obviously cock feathers, mm -hmm. raven feathers, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and Valerie's wearing another version. And Valerie's, Valerie can't just take a hat as it is. Mm -hmm. So this hat never started out looking like this. In fact, it was two separate pieces that Valerie has added her own little mystique to. Touch to. Yes. <laughs> a little touch. Yes. It's stunning. It's a stunning, it's a stunning yeah, both hat. Both of them are it's really beautiful. Yeah. Now, I understand that the hats not only bring you pleasure, but I understand that you have met very interesting people wearing your hats. So let's talk a little bit about um, I live in the East Village, uh -huh. and well, we usually start out either at Valerie's apartment or my apartment. Valerie lives uptown, I live downtown. Um, but we have a favorite brunch place because Valerie likes the pancakes, the blueberry <laughs> pancakes. So we end up in my neighborhood much more often. And we were walking up our, my block, 
and Olympia Dukakis accosted us oh, from behind. And, and I just her. kind of went, where did you get those hats? Where are you from? And so, the, you know, it was, and I looked at her and I'm going, <laughs> We didn't realize it was Michael her Michael Dukakis, Olympia Dukakis. I'm like, <laughs> Olympia! <laughs> <laughs> so I just looked at her and I said, what are you doing in my neighborhood? And she said, I need to get my nails done. I said, don't go in there. You go right around the corner to Second Avenue and you go down the steps and you go there. You know? And I said, why are you here? And she was doing a show at the public. Ah. And she had an apartment. Mm -hmm. in the, and it was, this was early in the spring. Yeah. So mm -hmm. New York being New York, we were in another store mm -hmm. shortly after. And one of our friends called. We were trying to hook up with them. And, and I said, you won't believe this. I just ran into Olympia Dukakis. And she's going to be appearing at the public theater in a new show. And there's a little dressing room. And you hear this little voice in the dressing room going, and I'm in the show, too. <laughs> <laughs> who was that? So we had to wait till this lady came out who was one of the extras in the show. And we were just kind of like, we ha it was just how connected mm -hmm. things are in New York. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just one you little piece leads to another. all the time, and you don't know who they are. Uh, but because we're dressed this way, mm -hmm. they approach us, and we never have to say, oh, my God, it's a celebrity. They're, they're saying, oh, my God, look at that hat. <laughs> right? Now, you also met a, a famous fashion photographer, did you, or a designer, a photographer? We met a gentleman named uh, Fadil Barisha. Uh-huh. Oh. And um, we, we had gone, first we went to see the Serizawa show at the Japan uh, Society, uh -huh. and then we went to the Whitney to see the Georgia O'Keeffe show on the mm -hmm. same evening, mm -hmm. and we popped into this little place called Lumi's to mm -hmm. have... Uh, a wee drinky. <laughs> and a celebratory uh, drink after bagging our Marimekko on the street, too. We had, we had, a, we had quite an Yes, evening. we found a Marimekko, uh -huh. not poster, what would you call that? It was a Marimekko fabric from the 70s by a Japanese designer that right. was framed. And it, it must framed. have been four feet by three feet. Well, it's interesting how the Japanese influence always comes to you, Valerie. And I just, I just want to do a little sidebar. Uh, you know, I hadn't seen Valerie in many years, and I was reading the, uh, the style section of the New York Times one Sunday, and I turned the page, and lo and behold, there's Valerie. <laughs> and I sent her a little note, and it was that she designed, was it a kimono? or I, I don't remember. What it was I made design. a hat. Was it a hat? I couldn't remember what it was. But I sent her a little note, and that's how we reconnected after maybe 10 years. It, it, five years in between, I sent her the hat that it took me five right. years to find. Well, we do always connect at Christmas at time. At Christmas time, yes, we do. Yes, we do. But um, anyway, not to not to digress. <laughs> but <laughs> it's it's interesting how you know Japanese culture finds you, well, one, way, one way or another. Speaking of Japanese culture, the strange hat. Yes. Yes, this is, a, this is a Japanese hat made by a designer who used to work for Issei Miyake, Chisato Tsumori. Um, and she went out on her own and has her own label now. Um, and some people say that this hat looks like uh, soft, cre soft cream, like Mr. Softy. Oh, like Mr. Softy. Um, and at least one person said something rather less flattering. <laughs> we won't go into that. Um, <laughs> So when you, when you put this hat on and when you look at yourself in this hat, what do you visualize yourself maybe wearing with this hat? Because when I look at this hat, you know, I see 1940s, mm -hmm. you know, tropical maybe print, you know, with a large shoulder pad and a glove and, you know. I did have the perfect suit for it. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a 1940s pink suit. Mm -hmm. um, I've grown out of that suit. <laughs> Um, the so color that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, it went the way of all things. Um, but I can still wear it with black, and there are other colors. I, I wish that I could show you here what, um, what I do wear it with. Um, it, it can be difficult, and that's one of the things about hats that stops people from wearing them, mm -hmm. is that um, you have to put it with the right mm -hmm. Outfit. Otherwise, when you look at yourself, instead of thinking, oh, I've got the wrong hat on, most people wind up thinking, oh, I can't wear hats. And we, our theory is that it's not that you just haven't found the right hat for you. Right. I think that people need to get the right shape for their head. They need mm -hmm. to get the right shape for their face, the right color. Right. Um, and what you're Maybe this isn't a hat shape that of the, the average woman would wear, but mm -hmm. there are hats out there. Mm-hmm. Well, every hat you've had on so far, 
it, it's, it's, it's a perfect fit. You know, this is modern, this is vintage. This, this is probably hat. from yeah. the 30s. Yeah. And I would wear my faux goat um, jacket, the black jacket. Oh, let's take um, a look at that. Let's put that yeah. together and see what... Let's see Being a vegetarian, sort of I don't oh, do I. real I fur. That. <laughs> uh, we do lots of faux fur um, so that, you know, and it's, it sort of looks like fake monkey, but it is in fact goat. Mm -hmm. And um, <coughs> made by a wonderful Spanish designer. Um, so this is one of the things that, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. yeah. works. Perfect. Mm -hmm. stops people on the subway. That goes perfectly with that. That and also and with my fluffs out. Yeah. fluffy hat. Mm -hmm. yes. But I, I like it with the red because it kind of contrasts. Oh. Contrast. Um, but uh, Valerie, I know you have you have some uh, thoughts about women and hats, and talk to us about what you think about Bella Abzug and her hats. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she and I have talked funny. about Bella Abzo. <laughs> um, I personally think she set the wearing of hats back by 50 years because I, is it nice to say this in It's not nice to say this in public. Every hat she wore was atrocious. Uh -huh. But I said that to Jean once, and Jean said, well, she did that for a political reason. Mm -hmm. That she, well, you tell. It's your story, Jean. Well, she used to. Um, <laughs> She worked in an office and she was very upset because people would always say to her, as the female of the office, could you make coffee? Mm -hmm. So she started wearing hats because she realized when she wore a hat, no one asked her to make the coffee. Ah. Oh, God. <laughs> interesting. And that's what started her on her routine that of wearing interesting. her crazy yeah. hat. So she was making a political statement. statement. Yeah. And, and from that perspective, I understand it, but mm. she didn't have a little sign on that said, there's a reason I'm wearing these hats. <laughs> um, so if she, what would have happened if she'd worn hats like this? People wouldn't have taken her seriously. They would have thought, oh, she's interested in fashion. She's not interested in, in politics. Mm, making a statement. Oh, exactly. Well, but we've already proven that we can walk and chew gum at the same time. At the time. same time, exactly. Well, what statement is your hat wearing, that you're wearing now, Jean? <laughs> it's, David, a Turkish, it have a state? it's a Turkish felt Oh, it does indeed. Hat. Yes. It keeps you warm in the winter. <clears throat> um, it's one of the things, and, and Felt is one of the mm -hmm. fabrics that was not on my top ten list ever. Mm -hmm. But I went to the felt show at the Cooper Hewitt Museum this past summer, and it was an amazing thing. Valerie is a, a big felt mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. um, so I've kind of learned about the fabric itself. Um, mm -hmm. This is traditional. It's Turkish. It's, mm -hmm. you know, literally keeps designed just like uh, a Turkish building. Um, while Valerie's is a Japanese shibori felt thing that when it's <laughs> rolled up thing. from Barney's and it looks sort of like a pupa um, or as you said earlier a vegetable mm -hmm. of some kind um, it's very organic it's well, uh, it's a beret yeah, it it's a, like beret a beret that the designer yeah. reshaped so um, yeah, it's it's, it's actually square. Mm -hmm. it's square now but mm -hmm. if you look closely at the center you can see the concentric circles mm -hmm. that come with a regular beret well beret was was that I got you started, I believe, on hats when yes. you yes the beret. Yes, when I was 20 years old, I uh, I went to France, and um, m part of my family is over there, and I was mm -hmm. with my grandfather, and we were going down the street one day, and there was a um, a display of of berets, and I thought this is probably a souvenir that I can afford. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just tried it on because I'd been raised with Pepe La Pew, you know, and he wore a beret. <laughs> and that was my image of berets, not that it was a functional, <laughs> real thing. Or artists wore berets, but people like me didn't. Mm -hmm. And I put it on and, and looked at myself in the mirror and I kind of thought, that actually works. That's a real hat. I can look good in that. Mm -hmm. So it was a wonderful souvenir. Um, and then when I went back home, and there I was in the freezing cold weather of Binghamton, New York, where I went to school, that kept me from catching cold. Mm -hmm. So aside from looking fun, mm -hmm. it had an actual function. And I think it was after that that I just said, okay, I have to wear hats, but I can't wear the same hat every time because the beret doesn't go with everything. So how many hats collectively do you ladies have? <laughs> John Riley, don't listen. Ah. Um, no, um, probably 30. 30. Each. That's no, me. No. no. I've got to have 50 or 60. Can, David, can, can I ask you to bring over that green coat just Absolutely. for a second? Absolutely. Absolutely. Just, we just met so a lady we can show at the craft show that had 500 hats. Oh, my. That oh. she inherited from her mother. Her mother was wow. a milliner. Wow. Wow. 
Thanks. This is just to show that I, I won't put the coat on. Did you design that coat? No, no. This was done by a lady, a Finnish lady named Titi Tolonen. Mm -hmm. um, she was Finnish, but she lived in Brooklyn. Um, and she worked almost exclusively in felt. And I was very happy to get this from her. Um, and I just want to show the audience that you don't always wear your hat with a black thing. Mm -hmm. um, you try to coordinate or, or do something contrastive. Right. So this hat, all, for all that it's green, and you might think, oh my god, how do you put a green hat with something? Well, here's a green coat. Right. Um, or you could do a different color as well. You could probably do an orange color or a brown color. Yeah, so you have a lot of choices. Yeah. Um, so David, when Jean put her hat on, you, you seem to have a, a, an idea in your mind of what this hat says. Tell well, us what this- It's very inspirational to me. You know, it has a very Aztec look to it. And it has, you know, a very, um, aerodynamic shape <laughs> to it. <laughs> but I, what I was noticing was, you know, the, the difference in the textures of the, f of the felt. And you yes. can see, yes. like, here are three very, very obvious different textures in mm -hmm. felt, right. which is probably one of the most common fabrications used in making hats. And, mm -hmm. you know, yes, milliners, right. mm -hmm. milliners a lot of times use them as, as felt as you know for their mock-ups mm -hmm. when they're actually making a hat out of something else right right so yeah. I was that's what I was really noticing were the different mm -hmm. the different textures and of course you know this you know I look at that and I'm like oh yeah that's that's me that's I would do that <laughs> I would do that you would do York, that hat in a New York heartbeat in a New York you know, heartbeat and, you and, would and do that and hat think nothing of it you know <laughs> it's like well what's your problem you know, well, you know I'd, like, I'd like to spend a <laughs> it's great <laughs> <laughs> All you need is your ski poles. You're ready to go. Uh, exactly. <laughs> you're ready to go. Um, um, it's kind of, and I was looking, and I was like, "Well, that reminds me of like a the Mayan calendar right around your head, going out there." You know? I was like, "Oh, look at this." It's great. Look at this hat. Now, you know, I'd like to know Too a little bit how you got um, you. interested in fashion, and just Jean, uh, you know, reading your background and your bio. It seems to me that you rebelled against your school uniform. And you, you talk about a red skirt with leopard bloomers. Yes. <laughs> so, and, and when I read that, I said that she had to be rebelling against this school uniform. So it, tell us exactly. a little bit about that. <laughs> exactly. Catholic yeah. grade school, high school, uh -huh. college. Um, in grade school and high school, we wore uniforms every mm -hmm. day. So mm -hmm. on the weekends, when you could kind of express your individuality. But my right. mother was a wonderful seamstress, and she made me a fabulous red skating skirt. It was a total ah. circle <laughs> that looked red until you spun. And then you could see the leopard lining with the leopard oh bloomers. My. So that was my incentive to learn to skate better, to learn to do the twists and things so I could show off. <laughs> so it brought out the, the theatrical side of me. You know, yeah. it was a much much needed change of, yeah. you know, from what I wore every day to school. That's exactly, because when I, when, I, when I was researching and putting the show together, and I said, this had to be a rebellion, the nuns, you know? <laughs> it, 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 you were rebelling against the nuns and, and the uniform. And Valerie, I think it was a red cape that got you interested in, uh, in fashion? Yeah, when I was 14, I finally put together a little bit of babysitting money, and I bought a cape from uh, Paraphernalia mm -hmm. on Greenwich Street, I think it was. It was the hot place to go. I didn't know that. Just, you know, I mm -hmm. walked in and there was that cape and, oh my God, I could afford it. Yeah. So uh, I snapped that up and, and that got such great feedback. Um, for, for years I wore that cape and in junior high school and in high school and for a little bit in college and, and that seemed to be everybody's focus for a while. So I thought, oh, I've got a winner here. Let's keep this one. <laughs> Can, can I just point out that Jean is wearing the, the ziggurat hat? Oh. This is the hat that she wore to the Guggenheim. Oh, to the Guggenheim. Um, mm -hmm. Because I had a structure on, and she, so she also had a structure on. The right. ziggurat is a, is a wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, is it a religious structure, or is it just a? It's a tower, and I think it, is, it has some religious. Or maybe it's a lookout. Mm -hmm. You're quizzing me again. Sorry, sorry, oh sorry. God. Anyway, <laughs> it's the <laughs> ziggurat hat. I understand that you're kindred spirits. Yeah. We are. In very many strange ways. Um, when she mentioned paraphernalia, I lived in Georgetown at the time, and paraphernalia in Georgetown was one of my favorite stores. So, you know, and over time, we met um, at a Metropolitan Pavilion vintage clothing show uh, right before Valerie curated a show at the Forbes Gallery in um, Japanese kimonos. And 
there's a, a little cafe where people were having something to eat and people were, you know, different women were like, saying, well, what did you get? And what did you get? <laughs> and so, of course, you know, I opened my box and showed my hat and I think Valerie had purchased a hat that day. I had day. purchased a hat. So we were comparing our hats. So, But actually, I, w I walked up to Jean because she was wearing a hat. I thought, I can talk to anybody who's wearing a hat. Who's wearing a hat. Yeah, it's exactly. like having a dog. <laughs> you can is. talk to anybody who's, who's got a dog. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. Yep. And they welcome that attention. And yeah. people who wear hats, they know that they're wearing hats and they know that that's going to attract some attention. So you have to be ready for that to happen. Right. right. And you, you have a wonderful array of hats here. Tell us a little bit about this hat. I find this an interesting hat. Oh, shall we? Uh, <gasps> Twins. Yes. I mean, it's interesting that we find hats. I don't know how you decide what hat you're going to wear every day. Um, it's well, a mood thing. It's, it's a, a mood, mood thing. thing. It's a mood thing. It really is mm -hmm. a mood thing. David, can I also have the orange um, coat? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. So it depends, like when you wake up in the morning? Something shouts out at you. You mm -hmm. walk into your closet and you say, oh, I haven't worn that for a while. Or uh -huh. this is the perfect day for X. Or, right. or yesterday I saw somebody wearing whatever uh -huh. and, oh, why didn't I wear that? Exactly. But I can wear it today. Today? Well, tonight I you can wear gorgeous. any hat you like. <laughs> <laughs> tonight you're wearing all your hats. Do you want to put it on? <laughs> right. Do and uh, on? what do we have going on here now? Yes. These are uh, twin hats uh -huh. that were bought probably two months apart, right. I would guess. Uh -huh. um, and they look almost identical. I think well, they I'm, have nothing I'm, in common. I, I hate to cut you off, but unfortunately we have run out of time. Oh. I would like to thank Valerie and Jean uh, and their array of hats, and of course my friend David for co-hosting tonight. What and, a blast. Uh, I'd like to thank you, our audience, for tuning in. And if you'd like us to speak about anything, uh, you can contact me at Susan at BehindTheShadows.com. And I'd like you to remember, until next time, remember, the brightest light shines behind the shadows. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we can keep talking. Yes. It's time to see Bob.